Accepting payments for products or subscriptions with Stripe is simple and no code is required with the dashboard solution that we're gonna to cover today. This is part two of the payment links feature from the Stripe dashboard. So let's get into it and take a look. If you have a small e-commerce business that requires simple billing procedures in the sense that you have a small number of products or SKUs, then this payment link system could work really well for you. As I mentioned in the companion video or the first part of this Stripe payment links uh, video, once the payment is created, you can text, email, direct message, post the links on your website, post links on social media and so forth, and even create a QR code for your payment link. And there's no need to configure an e-commerce website or a website at all for that matter. You can use this payment link feature entirely independent of a website itself. So the links can be used to give to your customers to choose what they pay, and they can also be used to sell products, services, and subscriptions. And that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So check the links in the description for the first part of the video on with the content of today's video. From the dashboard, find the payment link option, click the drop down menu, or use the hotkeys of C and L. The link creation page launches with a preview screen showing showing you what your payment will look like for your customers. And it's over here on the right hand side. So choose the products or subscriptions option from the drop down menu. And after choosing that option, your next option is to find your existing product that you want to build your payment page around. Or if you haven't created that product yet, click the add new product option. If you add a new product right here, a light box pops up with all the necessary options to customize your product, such as the name and optional description an optional image, and of course the price as either a one-time or a recurring payment method like a subscription. If you wanna set up your product page for recurring payment option, you'll get additional billing period options. So you can select the frequency of the billing plan. For more details on the billing plan function itself, check out the video in the description. A second option for adding products would be to do it before you get into this screen and create the payment link. In order to do that from the products tab of the main dashboard menu, just click the add product and configure it as needed. That way, when you go to build your payment link, your previously added product will automatically show up for you in the drop down menu list. And you can just click on it and add it. It's a lot easier. And as you can see, if you have the product image, it really enhances the appearance of the page as shown in the preview screen over on the right. You have an option to pre-select the quantity, which of course fixes the price for your customer. Like for example, if you're you're selling two t-shirts at $25 a piece, the price is going to get set at $50 for that payment link page, and it cannot be changed by your customer. They must buy two shirts at a time, unless you give them this option right here, which is to update the quantity themselves. You can still retain control of how many shirts any given customer can buy at one given time. So you do have that option when building the page. It's just a matter of which options you click on to allow your customers to change. If you want to add a second product, just click to do so and select from your list and rinse and repeat. Next is the option to select customers addresses and to require a phone number. If you require an address, you'll be asked to specify billing and or shipping to be collected. And if you're shipping an item like a t-shirt in our example, you'll choose the countries that you're willing to, willing to and able to ship to from the light box that pops up. Under the advanced options, you can select the save payment details for future use and allow customers to provide tax IDs if you choose. You can also set the call to action text on the button to pay, book, or donate. And finally, you can add a promo code if you'd like. Promo codes are where you can set discounts for your customers. So let's take a look at the coupon and promo codes now. From the dashboard on the products tab, just click on coupons and add or plus new button. Name the coupon code, then come down to the assigned percentage discount or a fixed dollar amount discount and just type it in. You can apply a specific product to the code that you've already set up. And if you wanna do that, all of your products will show up here by just clicking on the find a product box. 
you can set the duration of the code redemption limits as you would like. So for coupon codes, you'd obviously use these for sales and promotions that you run throughout the year or at any given time. So in practical application, if you want to email a code out to your customer or prospect list, then you'd give them that special code to enter into the payment page in order to have some money off on one of your products. In order to do that, just click on the radio toggle button to use the customer facing coupon code and your options will expand. You can name the customer facing code. And to be clear, this is the code, once again, that the customer actually types into the payment page. So it's not preset, but you've set up this coupon code and given that code in an email or some other way to your customers. Then they type it into this payment page to receive their discount. There's five qualifiers for the code that you can set, including first time user, limiting certain customers, number of times the code can be used, a date expiration, and a minimum dollar amount per order. Each of these qualifiers could be used for a specific and unique situation in your business that you can decide and use obviously according to how you run your promotions and how you run your business in general. Before you click on the next page, just like in part one of this video series, you can customize the confirmation page that your customers see. The options are a standard default message with a customized text-based message that you can type in, like a thank you message, or you can choose the don't show confirmation page. And by typing a URL in here, the customer will be redirected to a page that you specify right here. So if you have a thank you video or something that you want your customers customers to see after they've made a purchase from you, you can just type it into the URL of the page right here and Stripe will point the customer to that page after they've completed their purchase. After the confirmation page, just click the next button and you're going to be asked if you want to split the payment with a connected account. Again, we're not covering connected accounts, so check the links in the description if you want to learn more about what those are and how to use them. We're going to leave that box unchecked and we'll move on to the final step, which is to click the create link and your page is built. Once you've done that, you can just copy the link and immediately start sharing your link with your audience. This is also the details page where it shows you the details of the, the page that you just created. And if you want to change anything like the name of the page or add a note or edit, deactivate the page, whatever it may be, you can click into the details of the page here and make your changes as needed. So this is what the live page looks like, the one that we just built, and it will be linked in the description if you'd like to take a look at it. Since I've done other videos on payment page software like this, just a quick reminder that we have a links page on the website, which is a resource page. You can click and view different payment pages that showcase Stripe and other payment page softwares that allow you to set up pages like this. So feel free to click over there and check those out if you'd like. As I mentioned, you can text and email, otherwise send this link out directly to your customers. So as long as this payment link is in your Stripe account, it's going to be ready and able to receive payments from your customers as long as you have it uh, sent out to them and the customer has the link. As you build more pages, they will be listed right here and the copy to clipboard button is available right here in the summary screen. So you can easily copy and paste and send it out to your customer list and you can access all of your payment links by going to the payments tab in the main menu and then down to the payment links sub tab on the side. You can also just go to the more drop down menu and select the payment links and it'll take you straight there. I've covered the customers choose what to pay payment links option in part one of this Stripe tutorial video. So if you want to check that part out, go ahead and, and click on the video at the end of the this screen, you know, the, the end cards or scroll down and open up the description of the video and I'll have a link in there for you as well. So again, be sure to check out part one if you want to look at the other half of this. If you want more videos on Stripe in general, there is a playlist that's also linked up at the end that, that will tell you more about Stripe payment processing specifically. And if you learned something new, be sure to hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and comment below if you have questions about Stripe or anything related to the content of this video or anything related to the topic of collecting payments at your business. That's all for now. I'm Brian Manning, and I'll see you on the next one.